So today we look at a computer that can also make espresso. Before we get started, this machine was sent to us by Meticulous to test and review. No money exchanged hands and they don't get to watch this before any of you do. I should mention, however, that this is a pre-production prototype. So I will point out the differences between this and the final version wherever relevant in this review. Lastly, a massive thanks to Banky Brewing Tools for helping with the logistics. Okay, so as it stands today, this espresso machine made by a company called Meticulous is primed to be one of the highest funded food kickstarters ever. So what makes it so interesting that it has more backers than we have subscribers. Okay, fine, slight exaggeration, but our numbers are still pretty depressing. So if you're watching and you aren't subscribed, come on. Anyway, so a group of 40 or so super talented folks in Mexico have taken what is essentially a manual lever machine and fitted it with a computer and a bunch of sensors. The result is pretty nuts. The easiest way to describe the meticulous espresso is if the Flare 58 and the Decent had a child. Now, that sounds amazing, but we all know how the children of famous people turn out. So, what do you say we put this child to work and see what it's capable of? Okay, th that sentence taken out of context could get me in a lot of trouble, so let's quickly move on. Okay, so we program and pull a fairly complex shot a little later on, and also do something a bit wild towards the end of this video. So I suggest you buckle up because shots about to get real. Yep, I just did that. Sorry, I love a good dad joke. But now let's look at aesthetics. Four cuboids and a flared cylinder, it doesn't get more minimal than this. The meticulous espresso is a cool looking machine. It's sleek and modern. And what's really interesting is the deceptively simple exterior that houses some really complex tech. There's honestly not much else that I can say about the aesthetics other than if you're into minimal design, then you'll love this. The build quality is fine. I like that it's all metal, but while this machine looks really cool, you will notice on closer inspection that it feels quite industrial and has visible screws all over. I wouldn't go so far as to call it crude, but it is a little rough around the edges. I'm assuming the production units will be a tad more refined, but honestly, it isn't super obvious and doesn't really bother me too much. Their priority clearly seems to be functionality and UX, and I have absolutely no issues with that. It sports a bright circular color display controlled by a rotary knob that can also be clicked. This has staggy KG vibes and works pretty well and feels quite nice to use. The drip tray is 3D printed and feels super cheap. But again, I'm hoping the final one will be metal or higher quality molded plastic. The grill on top, however, is fully metal and very nice. Overall, no major complaints here. Now, before we jump into the fun stuff and start pulling some shots, let's get the truly riveting stuff out of the way. Service and maintenance. Now, maintenance is a breeze because of how simple this machine is mechanically. Move the plunger up, pop off the shower screen and give it a wipe down. The shower screen can be soaked in kafiza or something similar and deep clean every month or so depending on how grammy it gets. But we use a puck screen and rarely ever find that we need to do this. No back flushing, no descaling or any of that fun stuff. Now, I can't really speak to the longevity at this point and can only hope that the internal components are of high quality. Serviceability also depends on how the internals are designed and the availability of spare parts in all of the countries that they plan to ship to. The cool thing, however, is the digital aspect of this machine makes it super easy to diagnose problems because this machine keeps a log of every single shot. This data can be exported and sent to the company. And what's even cooler is that software issues could potentially be serviced remotely. Now, coming to functionality, here's where this machine truly shines. For starters, it's smaller and lighter than most regular espresso machines, making it much easier to set up on your own and even move around if you feel like rearranging your coffee bar. But most importantly, the workflow is super simple. And if you're used to brewing with the flair like we are, then you'll feel right at home because it's very similar, but requires less skill and effort to get started. It's a very unintimidating machine compared to say the decent, in spite of how advanced it is. 
Once you turn it on, on this prototype, you're greeted with an upside down splash screen that takes me back to the days of Windows 98 on a PC. Great, I just dated myself. Okay, once up and running, you should see a display that looks like this. You have the preset name up top and the pressure is the main display along with an analog style gauge and needle. Below that, you have temperature, weight, time and flow. Yes, you read weight correctly. This machine has a really responsive set of scales built right into the base. And you'll see in a minute why that makes workflow so convenient. There's even a little tear button off to the side. And lastly, you have a status indicator that will change from idle to heating to pre-infusion to infusion and finally purge over the different stages of the brew. Turn the dial to change the presets and click to change any preset settings. These are mostly self-explanatory, so I'll just tell you about auto purge, which is pretty neat. Basically, once the shot is completed, this machine will wait till you remove your cup to then initiate a purge. So here's how to pull a basic shot on the meticulous. Long press the knob and the status should switch to purge and the plunger should now move all the way to the bottom position. The status will then switch to heating. Now fill the chamber with room temperature or hot water and lock your portafilter in and place your cup below it. Place the two halves of the chamber lid on either side of the stem and the magnets will help them lock in place. This helps prevent condensation. Now, room temperature water does take a while to heat, so you could use this time to prep your puck. The production model apparently is gonna be a lot quicker. Once the machine is up to temp, it'll move the plunger all the way to the top and tear the scales before starting the shot. The only thing I'll say here is that I'd like to have a little more control over the speed of the plunger. Also, as the plunger moves up, you do have a bit of pre-saturation as water trickles onto the bed of coffee. This is a lot lower when using the matrix shower screens and we use a puck screen, so it's pretty much a non-issue. Okay, back to the shot. The plunger then moves down to start the pre-infusion stage and then moves on to infusion and subsequently stops the shot based on the target weight that you set. I absolutely love this feature. At the moment, it overshoots by a couple of grams, but I've been told the production model will be a lot more accurate. Having the scales built in also means you can use them to weigh your beans. Ah, I just love this so much, it's really spoiled me. Anyway, you can now remove your cup, place another cup on the drip tray, and it should initiate the auto purge. That's it, you have espresso. Ooh, that's a decent shot. Actually, it's better than decent. But we've barely scratched the surface of what this thing is capable of. So let's get a little nerdy, shall we? So to truly unleash the power of the meticulous, you need to whip out a tablet or laptop and open up the web app. Yep, modern espresso. It's super easy to set up. Just make sure your machine is on and connect your device to the meticulous Wi-Fi and open a specific URL. If everything went well, the screen on the meticulous should say UI instead of the name of the preset. Now to make things a little more fun, we thought we'd show you how this works by pulling a fairly complicated shot called a blooming espresso that uses most of the features available. So first use the slider to set the temperature to 89 degrees Celsius. Then on the left, we have pre-infusion and it's set to flow. You can then double click to create points and move them around to create the flow curve you want. To delete a point, just take it and drag it to zero. You can switch between a linear and a smooth curve using these buttons. The plus and minus arrows allow you to set a time cutoff for each stage, but here we're just setting it to fairly large values because we're ending both stages by weight. Here, our curve is set to quickly hit eight mils per second and hold that for about 10 seconds. We also have the pressure threshold set to four bars. So what this means is at any point during these 10 seconds, if pressure rises over four bars, it'll drop the flow accordingly to stay below this threshold. We have the pre-infusion target set to 0.3 grams. So after the first few drops of espresso have fallen, it'll move on to the infusion phase. Now on the right, we have the infusion. And here we have the control set to pressure instead of flow. And we have it set to zero for the first 15 seconds, after which we quickly ramp up to nine bars. Here we have the flow threshold set to 2.5, beyond which the machine will start to drop pressure to maintain the puck integrity. We then finish the shot off at a target weight of 50 grams. The settings on the top right are used to start and stop a shot. 
to purge, tear, and access settings, which currently doesn't seem to do anything. And lastly, you can use this button to toggle between the settings and the monitor screen, but this happens automatically when the shot starts. Cool, so let's hit start and see what happens. Okay, first we see that the status has changed to heating and it will now flash heat the water to 89 degrees Celsius. Once up to temperature, the shot starts by quickly pushing a flow of eight mils per second and holding it there. Okay, we, we didn't quite hit 10 seconds, but that's fine. We can now see that the puck is fully saturated and the first few drops of espresso hit the cup and it automatically moves to the infusion phase. This is so cool. On the infusion side, we have the pressure set to zero for 15 seconds. And this may have confused you, but it's to emulate cutting a pump on a regular espresso machine. So you can see the built up pressure is slowly declining down to zero and allowing the coffee to bloom. And as we hit 15 seconds, we ramp back up to nine bars and hold it there until we hit our target weight. Now, I'm not sure if you noticed, but we kind of ran out of water towards the end. And that's another minor issue that I have with this machine. And I am hoping that the final version has a slightly higher water capacity. But either way, I don't know about you, but what this thing just did is fucking cool. What's even cooler is that the software is apparently still quite early stage at this point, And the possibilities of what this machine can do once that's ready makes things so exciting. We have run into a few minor bugs, but even in its current form, this thing is bloody powerful. But let me share some of the things you'll be able to do with the production model. Currently, you have only two stages, pre-infusion and infusion. This number is going to increase substantially, which opens up some wild possibilities with multi-stage pulls that just isn't possible with most other machines. Yeah, you could do those 72 hour 16th stage shots if you want. Just don't drink it after. The next one is being able to save these complex shots built on the web app as presets on the device. This is also super exciting because as nerdy as I am, I don't want to fire up my Mac every morning to pull a shot. This way I can set it up once, send it to the machine, and it's now just a click away. Amazing. Okay, moving on to probably my favorite one, manual control. They teased this on Instagram and I absolutely lost it. So let me explain what I'm talking about. You can essentially convert this machine to a fully manual lever machine. The only difference is that this knob is now your lever. Yes, you'll have full control over pressure live as the shot pulls. This is both fun and very powerful. Now, I'm really hoping they push this a step further. Carlos, if you're watching, it would be amazing to be able to save the curves of a manual shot as a preset. That way, you could potentially build very complex recipes without ever having to open the web app. And the last one is more something I'm hoping they implement, which is temperature decline. Full temperature profiling would probably be quite challenging given how this machine works. But what I'd like to be able to do is cut the heat at a given point in a brew so I can achieve some sort of a declining temperature profile. These usually tend to taste better than the flat profiles or the ones where temperature increases towards the end of the shot. Over and above this, I'm sure we'll see firmware updates that add new and exciting features and some delightful bugs. Oh, the joys of the digital age. Okay, jokes aside, if you're anything like me, then the possibilities that this machine opens up should have you shaking with excitement. But not everyone is like me. So I think this is a good time to talk about who this machine is for. Now, before we get into this segment, there's something really important to remember. This is a new company, it's their first product, and it's being crowdfunded, so there are some risks involved. If you haven't watched James Hoffman's video on the risks involved with backing Kickstarter campaigns, then I highly recommend you do. I've linked to it in the description below. Just finish watching this video before you go there. He has enough views on his channel. Okay, so the reason I'm prefacing this segment of the video with this sort of a PSA is because I'm about to recommend a product that may never see the light of day. Now, don't get me wrong. This has nothing to do with Meticulous specifically. It's just the reality with crowdfunded projects. It is a gamble and you should know that before dropping over a grand of your hard earned money. But that being said, there are ways to gauge how big of a risk you're taking. In this case, I've met the founder Carlos, who's super nice, used a fully working prototype that's right here. 
and seen many working machines of theirs on display at Expo in Portland. So those are all green flags and I feel quite confident in their ability to bring this thing to life. The only risk I see here is potential delays in delivery times because it can be quite challenging to go from prototype to large scale production and that's a risk we're okay with, but your mileage may vary. Cool, with that out of the way, let's get back to who this machine is for. Okay, so with a car like the Porsche Boxster GTS, if you know the basics of driving, you can easily get around a residential neighborhood and even do your groceries. Take it to the track, however, and put your foot down on the pedal and you've unleashed a whole other beast. The meticulous has the potential to be much the same. Click a button and just use it as a simple machine or fire up the app and take a one-way trip to Nerdtown. This is not an easy task and requires some real expertise in UX. As we've mentioned before, most smart devices ship with pretty shitty apps. So if the folks in Meticulous can deliver a truly outstanding software experience, this machine will be a force to reckon with because it will then cater to pretty much anyone who's looking to buy an espresso machine, no matter what their skill level is. The tech that this thing houses allows you to both simplify espresso and overcomplicated beyond anything you ever thought possible. And it is for this very reason that I love it and really hope they deliver. So like I said, from what I've seen so far at Expo, chatting with Carlos, the founder, and having used the bare bones version of the app on this prototype, things are looking very promising. I said this in our video where we talked about things we're most excited for in 2023, and I'll say it again. The meticulous is kind of my dream machine. And even at $2,000 MRP, it's super tempting. So at the current Kickstarter price of 1299 US dollars, I think we're gonna risk it and back it. What do you say? I'm not kidding. Okay, give me a second. Boom. And that, I think, is a fitting place to end. But now, we'd really love to hear from you. Are you as excited for this product as we are? Or do you think it's just overkill? And if you have any other questions, please let us know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and brew our arms.